What's crackalacking, Aiden Imaging fans? Welcome back for another Two Minute Tuesday. In today's Two Minute Tuesday, we're going to go over a brief introduction on how to connect a Stream Deck to one of our PTZ IP or PTZ NDI series. The Stream Deck right here is a, it could be a budget friendly, low cost alternative to a PTZ controller, but you're going to get like basic functionality such as pan, tilt, zoom, and maybe a little bit of auto exposure. So we'll go ahead and dive right into it, see what we can get out of it, and I'll show you how to connect them. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, to get things started, you're going to need a Stream Deck and you're going to need one of our PTZs, whether it be the PTZ NDI or the PTZ IP series. Just have one of those and connect it to your main network or to the computer, that is. And we're going to go ahead and get a desktop view here and we're going to see what we got. So first thing we're going to do is open up the Stream Deck app. So this is what happens when you first install the Stream Deck. You're going to get this uh, application and you're going to go ahead and open it. Now, uh, in order to get these buttons right here, all you need to do to connect to it is going to look for plugins right here. And we're going to type in companion. And then you're going to see by BitFocus AS, you're going to go ahead and install this companion button right here. Once you have that installed, you're going to be able to go to the search bar over here. And we're going to be able to type in companion. And you're going to get a companion button. So this is going to be blank, right? This whole thing will be blank initially. You're going to go ahead and just drag and drop some companion buttons on here so that when you open the software companion, it's going to correlate those buttons to these right here that you place them. So let's say you put some functionality and companion here, but you don't have any companion buttons. They're not going to work. So make sure that you have companion buttons where you need them. So this is a versatile kind of solution. You can change these buttons to do anything else. You can connect to OBS, uh, you can change scenes. So just make sure that whatever buttons you want to move the PTZ have a companion button on them. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the YouTube video description of this video and you're gonna look for the uh, companion uh, link that I'm gonna put there. So you can go ahead and download the software. But once you have it done, you're gonna go ahead and open the app. It's gonna go ahead and open up the web UI for this guy. And once it loads, perfect. We're going to go ahead and we're going to look for the GUI, which is going to be our LAN wired. And once you're good there, go ahead and launch it. Now you can go ahead and hide this. Don't close it. If you close it, this right here will shut down. So make sure you hide it. And then now we have our main phrase. So don't, don't get intimidated. There's a bunch of stuff going on here, but let's just focus on instances. So instances is your connection to the PTZ itself. We're going to go ahead and we're going to search for Sony Visca. So that's the best way to connect to our camera. Go ahead and click add. Once you have that, we're going to look for label. Label is just the name of it. So I'm going to name this cam one. You can name it whatever you want. Hall, door, uh, you know, head, <laughs> change it whatever you want. Target IP, make sure that is the target IP of the camera itself. So my target IP is 192.168.1.189. Target port 52381. Camera ID, just make sure it's either zero or one. You don't need to change it from there. I'm going to click apply changes and we're going to go back to instances. Now, first thing you're going to look for is to make sure that the status is green. Okay. So right now it says null. All you need to do if you want to get it connected, disable and enable. Okay. So if it doesn't say okay, that means that you might have a connection error. Make sure that when you go to your configurations that this is all correct. Okay. So that is the target port. That is my target IP. And that is our camera right there. It should say, okay. Now, if you have everything done there, we're going to go ahead and go to buttons now. So buttons is, this is right here is what's going to be uh, your stream deck, right? So this is like a, a virtual stream deck. Think of it that way. And when I click on one of these buttons, I can assign it a command. So this one right here, this is going to be the top one. And I'm going to correspond it to this button right here. If you look on the camera, um, this guy right here is going to be, let's say top left, right? PTZ movement. So if we're going to set the button type, Going to go ahead and choose regular button and on text you can even type top left so i know that pdz movement is going to go top left you could also do text alignment which is pretty cool you can change the font size and you can also add a image instead so if you don't like saying top left or you think it's a little too confusing you can actually add buttons to it um, and then there's a bunch of other options right here you can change the background you can change the text whatever you want so there's lots of customizability which is pretty nice right now on to the main thing when you do key down so this is when you press the button very first time key down see that boom it's going to light up that means that i'm pressing it key down is going to be top left so we're going to look for let's see where is it somewhere here tilt up oh right here up right or up left sorry <laughs> up left so 
it's going to go top left boom up left that's what we want the camera to do and we're going to go ahead and you can add a delay if you want but usually you don't have to we're going to go ahead and do test the action so as you see my camera is going top left now notice that it's not stopping right now and that is very interesting because we did not add a key off action so if you want this to work properly right this right here is sending a command to go up left but it doesn't tell it to stop so you need to add a key off action which is going to be cam one pt stop all right and once you have that the camera will stop as soon as you let go of the button all right so let's go ahead and see if i can add a button right here let's go the bottom right so that way we can get the pt head back to normal so we're going to go bottom oh can't spell bottom right all right i'm going to go ahead and do a alignment to there so it looks pretty cool i'm going to go cam one down right all right and remember if we don't add this stop pt stop it's gonna do wacky things all right and then let's go ahead and while we're at it let's go ahead and add this middle button right here and make it the home button so regular button home and then it's going to be centered the action is going to be pt home okay this one right here you can make it pt stop as well just to make sure that it doesn't do anything wacky okay so we have our three buttons right here we have top left we have bottom right we have home let's press home on the here and we're going to notice the pt head goes to home now if we go top left it should go up as we hold it and when we let go it stops boom go back to bottom right we stop let's go see pretty cool stuff there now if we don't want movement let's see what they have in terms of exposure settings so we have zoom of course zoom in out zoom stop we have focus we have one push we have exposure modes gain up iris shutter up and then of course your presets right so let's go ahead and try a preset real quick we're going to go ahead and do this save preset on this one so we're going to name the button save preset and then we're going to name the bottom button below it preset one why okay that's a little weird <laughs> it's not uh, auto aligning the text but it's okay so we're going to go ahead and pull up the preset right so this is going to be like preset recall recall preset and we're going to go ahead and name it preset one make sure it's not preset 64. all right there you go and then of course you have you can use your pt stop if you want so when it comes to presets it's just one action it doesn't continue um once it gets to cam one then it's going to get to cam or sorry once it gets to preset one it's going to stop at preset one so you don't have to technically change that and then make sure that on your save preset you change this to one you can do whatever you want it doesn't matter just make sure that it corresponds to whichever one you're trying to recall later right so let's go ahead and move this up a little bit let's go top left ba boom and then we're going to go ahead and click save preset so hopefully it's saved let's press home and then if we want to recall it we're going to uh, press preset one and there it goes it goes right back all right so Using the Stream Deck can be a versatile uh, solution, and there's a lot more options as I showed you earlier. You know, you have your pan tilts, you have some exposure, you have your shutter. Um, you can change all of these, and basically, I would say, for production purposes, you can control a lot of functions on this guy. All right, now you're not going to get full control because there are some commands on here like preset speeds, and you know, freeze preset, and you know, toggling the flip and stuff. Uh, you're not going to get any of those controls, but you're going to get the basic functionality that you need if you're trying to run a low budget solution. So keep this in mind if you do want to run this and maybe we can uh, I'll, maybe I'll actually create some of these full button layouts uh, for you guys to use. So you can just go ahead and download it on the import and export. So uh, maybe I'll create one and I'll put it in the link of the YouTube. Uh, if you do want it, you can also message us at either support at adimaging.com or info at adimaging.com okay and we'll go ahead and get back to you on that but other than that that should be it for this tutorial and done
So, if you want to use your Stream Deck to connect to RPDZ, it is possible, like I mentioned. You're just going to miss out on some of the cool functions that RPDZs have, but it is it gets the job done. Uh, if you do want to connect more than one PTZ, you can do that as well. Under instances, you can go ahead and add another Sony Visca camera, and then you can go ahead and change the target IP on that guy to correspond to the next camera. Um, also, the Stream Deck and the companion app itself has multiple pages. So if you want to be able to control, let's say on page one, it's going to have PTZ1 functions, and then you go up to page two, that'll have PTZ2 functions. You go ahead and add more of those functions to each PTZ, and you can have multi-camera array uh, controlled via one Stream Deck. So that's really cool if you want, like you know, a budget-friendly solution. Um, so keep this in mind if you do want to do something like that. But if you did like this video, go ahead and leave a comment, leave a like, uh, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. This video was a lot of fun to make. I really like the versatility of this, like I mentioned before, and it is very budget friendly uh, when it comes to smaller productions. So if you have any comments and um, suggestions for the next video, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. But other than that, have a wonderful day, and I will get that SRT video out to you guys soon. See you later.